Welcome to Rebel Refueled. Rebel Refueled is a series of videos in which I'm going to show you some of the features of Rebel. If you're a beginner and just don't know where to start with Rebel, then this series is perfect for you. But even if you have used Rebel before, know some of the features, you might pick up some new things too. So in this series, I'm going to just go through some of the main features of Rebel, some of the hidden features of Rebel, some of the more technical features of Rebel, and I'm just going to walk you through them and show you how a certain feature or how a certain set of features works. Well, let's start with the first reveal. The first reveal might not be spectacular, but really good to know, especially if you start out with Rebel and just know, don't even know where to start. I'm going to take you through the features that are in this welcome screen. Now, some of you may have switched off the welcome screen. So if you want the welcome screen back in Rebel, you just say file, new, and the welcome screen will come back. So you can, if you don't want this to be at the start, you can switch it off with this feature. You have a choice here, either a print, and then you get the most common used sizes, like A sizes, B sizes, letter size, small sizes, and it tells you what the dimensions are. You can pick a screen size, so if you want to work on a certain screen, so work for television or animation, things like that, games, you might pick a screen size and there's favorites. Now, once you start, the first time favorites will be empty. So let's go to the favorites. Let's say I want to pick a favorite. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this canvas here and you see this little star behind it. And if I press on that little star, now this B will be added to my favorites. Simple as that. And if you don't want it, I don't want it. Just hit the star again till it's gone. Now you don't have to choose, of course, one of these. You can make your own. And up here, you can see the canvas size. You can choose from inches, centimeters or pixels, depending on what you're going to do. I'm doing most of my work for print, so I'm choosing centimeters. And then I can choose the centimeter size here and it's way too light. I want to have an A4. That's good. Here you find the or orientation. Whether you want a portrait or do you want to have a landscape? And the next thing you see here is the DPI. We will get into that in a minute. The other features you see here is open. If you have worked before, you can pick a reasons from the list. You can open a canvas. So press open. It goes to your Explorer and you can pick a work before. And down here, you can see the information about the canvas size. And you can pick here a canvas, actually a canvas that will be under your work. And let's see, these are the default ones. You can pick default ones and you can, of course, buy new ones at the Rebel store. And you can also create your own canvases, but we're not going to do that in this video. In another video, I want to pay some attention to creating your own canvas. Now you pick a canvas. Let's say I want to do some watercolor. So I pick Aquarelle 2 in this case. Here you have the texture size and by sliding that if we're going to work on the texture will be larger or smaller. So I'm just picking 100%. That's pretty much normal. This one doesn't have deckled edges and deckled edges means now you see them all nice straight edges. If I pick this hot pressed one can I use deckled edges? No, there must be one. Rough. Yeah, you go. You can switch it on and off. Now it is off. So you get a square one with deckled edges. You get a nice border fringe around it. And let me just demonstrate that then right away. There you go. You get a this is as if I have tear. Yeah, they tear this paper, cut this paper. Well, the, the bit of the watercolor effect paper. Uh, Going back to the screen. Now, the other options, we go back here. You have, you can pick your color here. Once you picked your canvas, you can pick a color. Don't like the color? Well, click on canvas color, pick your own color, and the canvas is gonna be this color. And if you really like this canvas and a color combination, you can with this plus add it. And now there's my new canvas, or you can remove it. And I'm gonna say, yes, remove that. And then it's gone. And that are basically the options here. The next option is here, record time lapping, time lapse, record a time lapse. If you switch that on, it's gonna record every stroke you make. And you have some settings for that. You pick the interval, so whenever it takes a 
a snapshot of what you're doing this one every second if that is way too much if you're going to spend hundreds of hours painting you may want to lower no uh, not lower that but make it a lot higher otherwise the video will be huge but if you have a regular work of a few hours one is okay the destination folder where does this video go mine is standard in videos the frame rate depending on what you're going to use it for 30 or 24 you might pick a 60 frame rate depending that all depends on the use and then the codec 264 is very safe would work on every machine if you got a bit more than machine you could do the codec 264 but i'm leaving it standard on that the quality will how well will it record 100 percent is really nice crisp the lower you go you might see some pixels here and there so you can change that and the resolution of course depending on where you're going to send it to you can pick your com yeah you can pick the resolution so i would normally pick this resolution the same resolution as i'm working in and that's it then and i'm gonna switch it off i don't want to record anything the only feature which i haven't revealed is the dpi we're going to talk about that now what does dpi stand for dpi stands for dots per inch it refers to actually printing techniques the more dots you can cramp into an inch the higher quality of printing work you're gonna get so if you put one dot on an inch you can imagine that one dot on an inch then you're gonna have one dot on an inch and your quality would be very very low but if you can manage to cramp 600 dots in that same inch you're gonna have a nice crisp image so dpi dots per inch now technically your computer does not work with dpi that is really for printing your computer works with pixels per inch how many pixels can you get into your screen and that depends on the quality of a monitor and often you see that there dpi it gets so many pin pixels in an inch but for now we're going to just stick with the dpi otherwise we're going to get so complicated you can trend you can calculate the ppi to dpi and the other way around but let's stick with the dpi for now since i'm assuming if you make a work you want to perhaps get it printed you have a choice on the dpi it goes from 72 to 600 now you most of the screens do around 96 dpi 96 is good for a screen if you're going to do some low images for the web 150 is a great size if you want to get something printed depending on what you're going to print it if you're going to print it on huge banners you might actually get away with 150 if you want to print it on a canvas really have good quality you want to have 300 and i have set it on 250 300 please personally i don't go below 300 there is a back backdrop if you're gonna hire put this on really high let's say 600 you can imagine the more dots i cramp in an inch the more the demand will be on your computer so if you put that really high and also create a huge canvas let's say i'm gonna create here an a3 on 600 dpi my computer is gonna struggle and you're gonna need a lot of memory that's the disadvantage now rebel Pro has a little trick to compensate for this because most computers you you don't want to work even on an A3 on 600 DPI even 300 DPI I have a reasonable computer but at some point it is going to struggle so I prefer working on an A4 now Rebel 6 Pro has a feature that is called nanopixels I'm going to just create a canvas and if you go into the canvas it creates this blank canvas and if you have rebel pro you're gonna press the settings slide down and see a little option here and that is called nanopixels you can switch that on you can switch that off now what nanopixels do best thing is probably just to show you that i'm gonna switch this off i'm gonna take a pen i'm gonna take a nice black color it's on a certain size doesn't matter what size I want to draw just a couple of lines there you go I'm gonna make sure nanopixels are off 
please go off. There you go. And I'm going to zoom in. That is the best thing to do. Now, what happens? If I zoom in far enough, you will see all these pixels. We're going we're gonna to see at some point, we're going to see the pixels. Now, imagine if I have this A4 and I decide, oh, I want to put this on a nice huge canvas. You're going to get this when you start printing. Now, the nanopixels, what they do, they will compensate for that and they will smooth everything out again. And you can see how huge the difference is. So if I want to create a huge canvas, but my computer cannot handle that, I can make use of this. And basically it means depending on your computer, you can enlarge something up to 16 times as large as the original size and still maintain the quality, the same quality as if you would have printed it on the original size. So for example, if you have an A4 and you've got a reasonable graphic card in your computer, you can blow up that A4 to an A0, and that is basically 16 times as large as an A4 and still have the same quality. That also means that I don't have to worry about painting on huge canvases, and that is a really ad huge advantage of having these nano pixels. That means my computer doesn't need to struggle. I can just work on an A4, which it can handle perfectly fine. I can add as many layers as I want, as many strokes as I want, and it still will handle it fine. Now, if I do the same on an A3, for example, I know that at some point my computer is going to say, no, no, Benjamin, I really don't like this. And it's going to be very, very slow. But the nanopixels compensate for that nicely. But also the same effect actually would happen if you choose a too low DPI. So let's say you don't have Rebel Pro and you decide to pick a low DPI, but work on a huge canvas, then you're going to see if you're going to start printing. The chances are that once you start printing, you may see these kind of borders if you choose a low DPI. If you choose a higher DPI, it's going to not be so apparent. So that is the advantages of it. And let me show you that with an example. I printed something. I printed something with nanopixels and I printed the same with no nanopixels on an A4 size. This is the original size. Now on the A4 size, you're not going to see a difference even if I put them side to side. I would zoom in, you wouldn't see much of a difference. But once I start blowing it up, you will see a difference. And I've done that. This is, let's see, these are no nanopixels. And I got to zoom in now with my camera a little bit to show you that. And around here, as you can see, you can see the pixels. This is with nanopixels. And as you can see, there are no pixels. It is nice and smooth. And this is the same what happens with a DPI. If you choose your DPI too low in the beginning, so you set up a canvas, an A4 with 96 DPI, you're going to print it. You're most likely going to end up with this result, not a nice print. If you are going to print, do an A4, do it on 300 DPI, you end up with a nice smooth print. But if you want to blow up that same A4, 300 DPI, double the size, four times the size, then you're going to be in trouble without the nanopixels. Now, as long as you do it double the size, most printers will compensate very nicely. So an A4 would still print pretty nicely on an A3 with 300 DPI since modern printers have some compensation in it to make sure the print still is pretty nice. But if you go too large, then well, you can imagine what's going to happen. Well, let's go back to that starting screen. And I think we've covered it, everything. Do I want to save? No, I don't want to save this. Right, there we go again. One remark, as soon as you're gonna export something to a JPEG, let's say a JPEG, forget about the whole DPI because it's not gonna record the DPI, but something else will happen. Let's say I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna do it on this size, the A4 size, so 30 by 21 centimeters, 100 DPI. I'm going to export this as a JPEG and I'll show you what happens because I've done that. Then we're going to get this JPEG, DPI 100, and you can see the settings here. What it does, it exports it to 1169 by 827 pixels. 
and that is roughly one megapixel. Now you can imagine that if you have a photo on one megapixel, those cameras weren't too great. Now, if I would set it on 300 instead, there you go, and I'm gonna export this, it's gonna forget about all these centimeters and stuff because JPEGs do not handle centimeters, they work with pixels. What happens then is that same picture, there you go, is gonna be 3508 by 2480 pixels. So that's a huge difference. Actually, that's about three times as large. And that is, well, roughly three megapixels, four megapixels, which will be a lot better quality. So if you're gonna choose low DPIs and wanna print, you may end up get into trouble. So what we're gonna do as a final step, I'm gonna export that same picture. That was just a blank canvas. So I have chosen a blank canvas rough um, I don't want, let's go back. I don't want deckled edges. I want to say, okay, I'm ending up now with a blank canvas. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to export this. I have set it on 300 DPI. I'm going to use that nanopixel export. I'm going to say, yes, please do that. 1600, four times as large. And what you will end up, you can see it here, is a picture of 14,031 pixels by 9,921 pixels and you can imagine that is about 40 megapixel yeah probably around 40 megapixels you can just blow that up and if you've done some photography you know that the more megapixels you have the better quality your enlargement will get and I don't even have to export it and once you've set up your canvas press that OK button you are ready to start painting but we're not going to paint in this video. This is just the first reveal all about that welcome screen. What are the features and what do you need to pay attention to? Well, that's it for this first review. See you in the next review. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button. Otherwise, you're going to miss the next review.